How's it going guys? Um, this is a bit of a different video. It's not a tutorial. I just uh, got a couple of messages in my DMs asking me how I made a transition from being a junior developer to a senior developer through the years. And I don't have a clear answer, but I do have some anecdotal evidence as to how I did it and what I think the best approach to take is. The first thing I want to do is, before we get into that, is just to find what I feel a junior developer is, what an intermediate developer is, and what a senior developer is. First of all, I think a junior developer is someone that the company knows needs assistance and they, they understand that other developers will have to help them along. So they won't get the big project straight away, but they can certainly help out and they're expected that they will need assistance while they're working. Hey, what you doing on your computer? What's a computer? An intermediate developer is someone who can handle full projects on their own, but will most likely report to a senior developer. Um, they may also be in charge of handling junior developers as well. A senior developer is someone who makes big architectural decisions um, and they're trusted with projects completely on their own. They also check intermediate and junior developers work and they're also responsible for helping out junior and intermediate developers. So how do you transition between being a junior developer to someone in a more senior role? All my advice is completely anecdotal, but I think it's pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty good. It's kind of what I did on my path. And if I had to do it over, I would do it this way again. So the first thing I would say is when you enter a company as a junior, don't come in with an arrogant attitude. Understand that you are the junior in that company and uh, there are senior developers and show that you want to be there to learn and develop, not to show everybody how things should be done. I've been around a lot of uh, junior developers who um, seem to get irritated at being told what to do by people senior to them in a company. And you don't want to be that kind of person because it just puts people off you and it doesn't look good on you when you're in the company. So when you come in as a junior into a company, you may have like a bunch of ideas about how things should be done. And when you see the code base of the company, you might be like, why is it not done the perfect way? And that's actually because real life code actually looks very different to the perfect code that you find in textbooks and online in tutorials. Instead of critiquing the company and being like, it should be done this way, just ask why it wasn't done that way and have an attitude of wanting to understand the code base rather than the attitude of wanting to critique it. What are you doing? Another important attribute to have as a junior developer is to always want to learn. I remember when I was work, when I first started working, I would go to my job, work, come home and go straight onto YouTube or Udemy or like through a textbook and just start learning, learning things. Even if they didn't pertain to my job at the time, all that knowledge actually has been really helpful throughout my career. Sometimes you may be revising things that you already know in a book that's written in a different way, but you may pick up a thing here or there and it really helps to just expand your knowledge. Really early on in, in my career, I started learning about this language closure and I was like, I'm never gonna need this language ever in my life. And I spent a while learning it, thinking I would never use it, but I, you know, I got, some, I got some good ideas from learning it. But years later, I actually got a job which needed that closure experience. So you never, you really never know. And it's always good just to learn. It's probably the hardest part of being a developer is that the learning never ends because things are constantly changing. I also wanna say that when you start off your role, you should really focus on communicating clearly. And what I mean by that is, if you're having an issue and you have a bug that you need help sorting out, when you ask a senior developer about it, describe everything that is happening in the code as best you can and as clearly as possible. Also, try solutions for yourself and explain what solutions you have tried and why you tried them. Because a senior developer doesn't want to solve your problems for you, he wants to help you solve your problems. Also, when you first start out, your code's not gonna look perfect at all. When you get comments or feedback on your code, really think about the feedback and try to remember it so that you don't repeat the same mistake in the future. Um, I once dealt with a, a junior who, who never closed his HTML tags and it was such a simple thing to do and every time I would have the same comment of please check your HTML, please check your HTML and it's, 
It gets really frustrating to work with someone like that. I've also had instances where developers weren't uh, upper camel casing their class names and it makes working with their code really hard because before you even check the logic, there's already formatting issues and it starts feeling a bit like a waste of time. Continuing that part, a super important trait of a programmer is to have well formatted code. A telltale sign of a senior developer is very neat and clean code as well as um, very clear and concise variable names. So the senior programmers at a company probably won't want to give a developer sole responsibility of a project if they feel like they're gonna to have to rewrite it at a later stage. So try and keep that in mind when you're writing code and try and show that you know that code should look neat and things should be named very well. Deadlines are also very important to meet as a junior developer, but if you feel like for some reason you're not gonna make the deadline, give a good span of time beforehand to the project owner or the senior developer who is who's managing you at the time and explain to them why you won't meet the deadline. It's much better to let them know a day before than 15 minutes before a demo or something. Um, and it's way more professional. The last piece of advice I wanna give, and I think it's actually the most important piece of advice, is to be someone who's pleasant to work with and who's nice to be around. And it seems a bit silly, but when you're approachable as a junior and people feel like they can communicate with you and they can give you comments without you taking it too personally, they're gonna to wanna to work with you more. And if they feel like you will communicate issues with them and you will be open to them about how, how things are going in the project, then they'll wanna work with you. So that's a really give and take part of the relationship. And also if you're nice to be around, people want to want to work with you. Yeah. Who's magnitude? Yo, 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 pop, 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 pop. pop. If the senior developers and the project managers see that you're actively trying to do a good job and do the best that you can, they're gonna to wanna to help you and they're gonna to want to give you projects so that you yourself can thrive and excel in the company. So I guess that's all the advice I have for moving forward as a junior developer. As I said, this is completely anecdotal device, but I think it's I think it's good and it's kind of what I learned along the way while working as a developer. Yeah, so I hope this helps you out. Please like and subscribe. Cheers, catch you later. Bye.